call to order this Onwasa Board of Directors meeting. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, led by Director Papat. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Our invocation this evening will be led by Mr. Brian Young, Senior Pastor with Love, Grace, and Mercy Church. Father, we thank you again for the opportunity to come together, Father, to be the leaders that you've called us to be. Lord, we ask you to bless this meeting tonight. Give us open minds and open hearts as we go through and discuss the business for Onwasa. Thank you for the leadership. Thank you for guiding and directing every decision they make. We ask it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you. Please turn cell phones to offer vibrate and individuals making presentations or public comments are asked to adjust the microphone as necessary to speak directly into the mic. This meeting is being recorded on G10. First item of business is to approve of the agenda. Mr. Ma uh, Mr. Chairman, we'd like to uh, make a motion to amend the agenda, please. Right. We'd like to add uh, under business item C, uh, annual audit for discussion. All right. Second. Heard the motion and a second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Okay. Approval of items on a consent agenda. Need a motion to approve the consent agenda as shown. So moved. Second. Moved and second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion is adopted. Under business, the sale of timber <coughs> thinning, presenting Mr. Frankie Howard, CEO. We have a business item for you tonight to discuss the sale of additional timber. Uh, this will be two additional tracks. One is at our Wachovia track property that's on Highway 50, and then the others at our Northwest Wastewater Treatment Plant. Totaled at roughly 141, 42 acres. This is coming at the recommendation of our timber management consultant. We will take these to bid later in the year. Um, as you can read, one is expected to yield about twenty-five dollars to $30,000, and the larger track, potentially $50,000. So what we would ask for is your approval to take that out to bid later this year. And there's maps to back that up in the business section of the agenda books, so you can kind of see where those areas have been identified on those two properties. Motion to, motion to approve is heard. Second. Second. A motion to approve the sale of the timber by bid as recommended by the timber consultant and delegate to the chairman the authority to accept the high bid as long as it is reasonable in his judgment and further authorize the chairman to execute a timber deed. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. <clears throat> Capital projects update. Presenting Mr. David Moore, Chief Operations Officer. David? Next speed tonight. <laughs> Time to uh, let's see. If I need to. Are they going to give me the next slide? No? <laughs> there we go. Yay. 
right. Chairman Bender, members of the Board of Directors, I'm, I'm here this evening to provide an update on several projects currently underway from our capital improvement program. Um, this will not be a comprehensive review of the CIP, but it's part of an ongoing effort to keep you informed as we work on uh, priority or high profile projects. I'll just kind of give you an idea where things stand. Let's see if I push the right button. No? Yes. Uh, first slide tonight uh, in the first project is an update on the Hurricane Florence recovery work at the Northwest Wastewater Treatment Facility. Um, with approval of revisions to the construction contract that were approved at the last board meeting, the contractor has made good progress in multiple areas. Um, this slide in particular shows the elevated electrical structure that's replacing the ground level building that was flooded in Hurricane Florence. Uh, I've mentioned in meetings in the past that uh, this building's elevated uh, two feet above the 500 foot flood elevation. So um, we, uh, cross your fingers, will be good for uh, a considerable amount of time. Um, actually, the, in the progress, I took this picture, I think last week, and the, the, the permanent doors have been put on the building. It's now fully sealed and, and weather tight. The um, uh, thing to note is uh, we're reaching kind of a, and I'll talk about it in the next slide, but we're reaching a point of bringing the electrical and the new electrical system to activation. So this, uh, having this building ready to go has been important. This is the interior of the, the new electrical building, uh, the new distribution equipment installed within. Uh, as I mentioned, we're getting ready to do the switchover. We'll actually take individual plant systems off their old wiring, which was damaged in the flood, and switch them to the be supplied out of the new building. As you can imagine, we're having to run the plant at the same time we do that, so it's just a tad on the tricky side. But uh, they started today. Uh, the other thing that we'll do, it will bring the existing plant emergency generator back online. We actually had uh, contractors in today to inspect it and make sure it was operational. We've been running off a rental generator sitting on a trailer, and that doesn't inspire a lot of confidence in storm events. So it'll be nice to get the full unit back up and operational. My last slide, and it's kind of a, a muddled mess, but uh, this is actually the uh, micro piles that will support the foundation of the flood resistant building that will protect the, the pumps and the features you see on the right hand of the slide. Um, this is one of the things in the, the last meeting we asked for the change in the contract would be to add the micro piles to support the building. There's a total of 54 around this building and another 30 around uh, the smaller sludge digester building. Um, all the piling uh, work started roughly two weeks ago. It'll be done next week. And uh, uh, we haven't had too many surprises with that, so it's going fairly well. Uh, next project, the uh, Water Chemistry Laboratory, uh, build, uh, main office building addition. As noted on the slide, the laboratory has been relocated to this building and is fully operational. So the, the lab is, is working out of the new building. Um, it was, uh, I wouldn't say tricky. I mean, it was kind of a couple stage process, but uh, uh, the final occupancy certificate was received last week and relocation of administrative staff. There are four offices behind those windows in the middle. And uh, I think one of them's conference and, and three of them will be set up for personnel. So that moves underway. We had uh, time some furniture delivery and that's come in. So we're able to utilize the building to its full extent. To uh, illustrate how far the project has come, this is a photograph of the lab space for March of 2022, the last time I briefed the board on this. And then this is what it looks like today. So that was right just as they moved into it and got set up and started production. Uh, very modern facility. I didn't include the picture, but as you recall, they're working out of a, uh, a modular unit behind the, the main building that was pretty decrepit. So now we're in a, a state-of-the-art facility. Um, to, not to get too far off the track, but it's interesting. You can see on the ceiling those things that look like white bags hanging down. That's actually part of the ventilation system, and it prevents drafts it comes out and they're like diffusers, so it prevents having drafts in certain parts of the lab. And it's, uh, it, it looks kind of weird, but it works really well. The 
uh, next project is the parts and equipment <coughs> warehouse, uh, 5,000 square foot facility. Um, actually, the uh, CFO uh, ramrodded the project all the way through, so kudos to her. Um, it's in the parking area behind the main office. As noted on the slide, all work's been completed and the building is now in use. And similar to the lab, this is what it looked like in March when we talked about it last time. The main question at the time was, what are you going to do with all the space? The answer to that is fill it. Um, it's amazing to me how many bits and pieces it takes to keep Onwasa operational, and uh, the vast majority of them are right there. Uh, the building also includes two offices for warehouse staff, a restroom, and a mechanical slash computer room. So uh, it's worked out very well. It has a very wide aisle, but that's for forklift access. So we can actually, there's a forklift in the building, can drive around to any part <laughs> of the stacks and put things or take them off the rack. So. Uh, my remaining slides are not uh, super exciting, but uh, talk a little bit about these. Uh, this, this one represents the Highway 24 Utility Corridor Project. Uh, to remind you, this is uh, two projects. One is a force main from the existing Swansboro wastewater plant <coughs> to the Piney Green pump station. Uh, the ultimate goal is to pump all the wastewater collected in Swansboro to Camp Lejeune for treatment. The second project is a water transmission main from the Hubert water treatment plant to the Piney Green booster pump station. We're trying to be more efficient in how we distribute water through our system. Um, I've just kind of got a picture of the plans here uh, in, in terms of an update on progress. The design work is 90% complete. We've had meetings in the past month to go over <laughs> our, our final review comments. Uh, we'll be submitting for permits within the next two months and we anticipate being ready to bid the project in early 2023 that's for the force main work, the sewer force main and pumping stations. Um, it'll be bid as two projects, the pump station work and the piping work for the force main. Um, uh, we're thinking roughly 15 months for completion. The water main project, the design's also 90% complete. Uh, we have to secure an easement from uh, Marine Corps Base Camp Lejeune to install the water line, uh, the sewer line doesn't need an easement based on our current agreement with them. So we're kind of running through the process of getting an easement. Um, we've had some correspondence, but right now I don't have a good time frame for when that'll be secured. So the water line project's kind of on hold until we uh, get that agreement in place. When's the estimated bid date for these projects? The, uh, the force main project is probably before March of 2023, so next spring. And the water main, depending on, we'll be ready to bid it when the, we get approval on the easements. Do you think these prices are going to go up significantly or not, the cost? Um, yeah, we've already seen that, and it's, it's very hard to tell. Well, um, the, I think the next slide is the, the southeast wastewater plant. Um, we've seen costs go up there probably, what, 60 70 percent over initial estimates. Um, I'm very concerned about the pipeline jobs, just the availability of the pipe. And you know, we're working, I mentioned this before, that DOT job, we recently talked to them. They were having a 60-week lead, lead time on certain kinds of pipe. So it plays havoc with your schedule when you've got to wait a year for materials to show up. I think you upped the estimate on the wastewater one for this, too, when we were working <coughs> on that grant. So I think it went from 15 to 27, yeah. or would Wooten's help. And we've, and that these estimates include a pretty healthy contingency because we don't know exactly where we're going to be by the time we bid. The southeast service area, the new wastewater treatment <coughs> facility. Uh, this is actually a, uh, a plan view of the proposed uh, 1.5 million gallons a day treatment plant. Um, as it says here, the design's roughly 40% complete. Uh, we've really been pushing the consultant on this one. Um, It'll be located on a portion of the existing Holly Ridge uh, wastewater treatment plant spray field. And I don't have a slide for it, but in addition to this project, we're gonna be converting the entire spray field from <coughs> spray field to infiltration basins. So um, we have a total estimated cost of $55 million for this facility, but that includes the plan and all the infiltration basin work. 
We're going to be constructing, I think, 26 of them. Um, in terms of schedule, uh, the consultant's goal, we, we actually have a, a pre-permit application meeting with the state right before Christmas. Uh, we hope to be in a position right around January 1st to submit the permit documents for the entire project and start down that review process. The consultant's estimating that'll take about nine months because uh, we are trying to permit an entirely new treatment plant. Um, bidding for construction would follow that. Uh, I will say in talking about ways to, uh, to one, to deal with material lead times and also potentially to get better costs, we're considering doing a bid project just to bid the materials. Uh, the plant is kind of a prefabricated unit, so we're thinking of basically doing a material only to buy the plant ahead of actually the construction contract to assemble it and, and build, build out the site. Uh, we could lock in materials, get approvals, and, and go through the process of getting to fabrication, hopefully with the idea of having the materials show up about the time the contractor's ready. So, location? Location. It's, it's right outside of Holly Ridge at their Sprayfield site. It's kind of across the road from the summer house at Ever Bay Development, but back in quite a ways off the road. Um, the top slide on the booster pumping station, uh, design work is ongoing on that. Uh, we had the soil borings done recently at the site, uh, much to our surprise, we didn't get a lot of warning that they were going to be out there. Um, we have settled on what we believe is the footprint for all the items, um, working with the CEO to get a meeting scheduled with the town and talk about the easements we need for the placement of the building and the uh, installation of the water lines. So, you know. Is there any way we can improve upon this time frame for estimated completion? I'd be happy to help with scheduling meetings because I don't know if you've been to the island recently, but there is a lot of new construction that is just yeah, about we're tracking complete. That. So if, if we had issues previously, it's, it's only going to be worse this summer. I mean, because they're not building small houses, they're building True. big houses. We, and, and I'll offer a director that we actually, uh, and Seth, jump in if I misspeak here, but we actually uh, try a little bit of a different operational okay. uh, method last summer, and it seemed to definitely help in terms of uh, pressure calls over the, over the year. Mm -hmm. We did, we'll I try think, to, over the holidays, some of the holiday weekends we did. Yeah, we tried to, we tried to, to boost pressure coming out of the plant. Okay. So, but no, well... Um, we're definitely looking at ways to do that. Uh, I'm a little concerned about the lead time on materials on this project as well. So. Okay. Well, if I can help in any way in just getting parties together, let me know. Very good. Thank you. Oop. Where's my slides? Okay. Um, apparently my last slide's not going to show itself. Um, and it was just a, a site plan, but I wanted to mention that work is underway on evaluating land owned by Anwasa <laughs> along Union Chapel Church Road. It's across from the Mark Marietta Quarry. Uh, we purchased 17 acres with the intention of having a, let's see, of, of building a new water plant. It would be the third major water plant for the system. Um, we've hired a firm, they've been out and we're evaluating the site for its ability to hold the water plant and also design the treatment process. Um, we anticipate having the study done sometime in the spring, and then that'll kind of morph into the design of the actual plant itself. Um, I have some concerns about whether it would be able to fit on the site, whether the site conditions were suitable for that type of construction. So we're kind of going through that vetting process right now. Um, this is tied into two other things, which I just want to mention. Uh, we've also entered into a contract with a, a hydrogeological firm, and we're looking at uh, what we're calling a raw water master plan. Our goal is within the next 10 years to double our raw water sources from what we have today. Um, Mr. Brown's been very instrumental in getting this off the ground, but uh, uh, we're looking at kind of short term what we can do in the next two years, what we can do in the next five, and what we'll do in the next 10 to increase the amount of raw water available to Onwasa. 
Um, that also dovetails into we received a grant from the state to do a, a water system master plan. Uh, we're going to utilize a firm that manages our water model and kind of look at the water system as a whole, the distribution system in particular, and where it would make sense to do improvements to help get water around the county. And if we put the new water plant in, what does that mean for the system? There's been some discussion about potentially additional water tanks, trying to model those and, and see where the best fit is and how it would operate well. So the three of those things are, are kind of moving on their own track, but after the first of the year, I'm gonna pull everybody in and kind of get us all talking and, and try to set some direction into the future. We've looked hard at the sewer over the years. We need to spend some time on the water too, so. And that's uh, kind of what I had for you tonight. So uh, any other questions, I'd be happy to answer. Questions? Thank you, David. Thank you, sir. Item C, the audit. Frankly, you want to lead us off and tell us where we're at and what problems exist? Yes, um, I can kick us off with this. So we did have it up as a potential item in a few of my updates. Uh, to the board this past month. Um, unfortunately, we had to pull it off as, a, as an item because they weren't quite ready to, they haven't submitted it yet, so we, we can't present it to the board until it's been submitted. So I did get a question earlier in the week, so I provided you guys with an email on that question and the answers to that to the entire board. So I feel like that's pretty much what's triggered us to bring that up here and discuss it as a group, kind of see where we are with the audit. According to staff, and Tiffany can chime in, but they've gotten everything they needed to 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 finish the audit this year. Unfortunately, they didn't get it done before the October 31st official deadline. They are working within the grace period, if you will, um, and claim that it's not late until December, is it first or second, whatever that date, December 1st, I think. So that's where we stand with this current audit. I, there were some questions about previous dates of submissions. So I provided that to the board in the last uh, time that you had to respond to the LGC on on timely audit submissions. So that's where we are. I think there might be some other questions that I can help answer as far as the audit. I don't have any, but it just, I, I think, I think since the audit team works for us, you know, I think it's been a while since there's, we've changed auditors. And uh, I know it's recommended that you change every so often. I think I heard five to seven years, I think is, so I'm, I'm feeling like it's time that we put out for bids to see what other audit firms might be interested in, in doing our audit. And, and especially, I think, with their, this current group's history of not completing the audits on time, I think that reflects badly on, on not only us, but it reflects back on the organization, too. And it always brings a red flag that the LGC, when you, when you don't complete your audits on time. So... I'm recommending, and in fact, I'll make a motion that we authorize the staff to uh, begin the process of putting out for bids uh, uh, and for, for additional auditor. And the reason why we need to do it sooner, I was talking to uh, the firm that did the audit for the city, and they were saying, don't wait too long. Uh, a lot of your companies will, will go ahead and get their, their work lined up, and we don't want to wait to the last minute where, we're, where if they might jack the price up on us, or we don't get some of the good quality ones bidding because they're already full of work. So I'm going to make a motion that we go ahead and authorize staff to begin the process of uh, advertising for a new audit firm. I second. Moving and seconded on me. Any questions? One question. Is this the second year that they've been late? Second year they've been late? No, they've been late. What do you, what do you, what do you have for me? The last five years, from what they pre presented to me and Tiffany earlier today, we were on time last year, but we were late every year prior to that. Um, now there was two years, one was COVID and one was Hurricane Florence, which caused some delays naturally. Um, but I don't have history beyond that. I know they have been doing our audit for quite a while. What's the status of the present contract? Is it, <clears throat> we're not bound in for any- Just one year, year at a time, yeah. So we got to get through this audit. I mean, and, but anything prior to that has to go before the LGC. I know we're using the word bid, but actually this is pro a professional service. We're asking for pro proposals, right? Probably what we'd be doing, yeah. Yes. Yeah. We're doing a request for proposals. 
Okay. Right. Any other questions? Are we bound by the low bidder? No. Not in this Thank case. You. Any other questions? Hearing none, it's been moved that we prepare specifications for receiving proposals for the uh, next year's audit, next fiscal year's audit. Uh, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Hearing none, the motion carries. Public comment. We have anybody in public comment? None. Mr. Howard, your comments? Yes, just a few things, uh, if you don't mind. Um, just to kind of add to what we've already been talking about. I presented this to you, obviously, I give you guys a weekly update or report from, from our office and staff, but just for the sake of the general public and anyone watching this meeting, um, as you've seen on our latest ops report from staff, we're officially over the 56,000 customer base. Uh, I think we're just a few, a few accounts higher than that um, per the last report, and 7,500 sewer accounts. Um, that's because of the growth that we've been seeing, and I've been reporting to the board, uh, the last six month average is about 160 accounts per month. And then for the 12 months total, it's been about 140 accounts per month. So that's, I would say the average prior to that was south of 100 accounts per month from what, from what staff are telling me and what, what history says. So any well, specific area where the growth's coming in or is it just countywide? It, it is countywide if you look at the map, but is there's no denying the fact that it's the southeast area seeing the majority, I think, larger projects and, and um, requests for water and, and in some cases sewer as well. So, but it is definitely countywide. So don't, don't get me wrong. There's definitely projects going on everywhere. It seems like so. So with that, um, we also talk about the when and David hit on a little bit earlier with the water with the water side of the house uh, ROC Mr. Seth Brown keeps us on our toes when, when we look at water production every month and I shared this with the board in the last update um, but I think in October we saw a 4.5 percent increase year over month over year so based on what we're seeing and you can see kind of how that plays out in a chart with our permitted capacity I think our peak or our average was 9.8 million gallons a day for that period of time. So producing a lot of water, we've got a lot of demand out there. So fortunately we've got the grant that we're working on our master plan and we're working on our third water treatment plant as David presented earlier. So it's certainly coming at a timely <coughs> position in our, in our need for water. Just a couple other things. Uh, we had, a uh, this is from staff standpoint, uh, we had a veterans reception for our Anwasa staff. Uh, we have 24 veterans amongst our 131 total staff, and so I, I think that's pretty impressive. I mentioned that our staff, that's nearly 20% of our staff who are also previous uh, military service. Quite a few of those 20 plus years in the military and inside to come to work for us, and we feel like that certainly makes us who we are and, and better for that, so we, we appreciate their service. We also install green light filters at our facilities here on Georgetown Road, and honor of veterans and the uh, initiative that the National County Association of County Commissioners uh, supported the green light initiative for veterans. I know a lot of county facilities were doing that as well and city facilities. Just a reminder that Thanksgiving holiday is next week and our offices will be closed Thursday and Friday. So we're looking forward to that little, little break and hope everybody gets time to be with family and friends. Just a couple of notes about myself. I think I reported this. I don't, I don't think it was before the last board meeting, but I'm officially on the Jacksonville Rotary Club, thanks to Director Bennett for uh, recruiting me and getting me on that club. So got one more thing to do on a weekly basis, but I, I certainly appreciate it and uh, look forward to, to the camaraderie of that group and serving the community. Also been appointed to the Jacksonville Onslow Chamber Board, thanks to former CEO, Mr. Mr. Hudson, and he got me on that. So. I'm, Glad to be on that group and represent Onwasa. Earlier today, I shared the same capital improvement update with the Jacksonville 
ONZO Economic Development Board. So they were very uh, happy to get that update. So I thank David for helping me with that. Um, he, they also had Wally from the City of Jacksonville giving an update on their infrastructure and how the capacities we have to serve economic development growth in the county. So with that, that's, that's all I got. I, wanna, I meant to say this earlier, but thank the staff for being here tonight. Great team. We're all here, the leadership team, so I appreciate them for what they do to help me provide updates to the board throughout the, the weeks in between meetings. So with that, that's, that's all I have. Any, re any reports? Uh, no, Mr. Chairman, we have no lawsuits and we're trying to keep them that way. Mm -hmm. Don't you? Good. Just for the benefit of the public who may be watching in terms of receiving the executive officer's comments, we also receive and get the benefit of very extensive memorandums as to the status of Onwasa every week. And uh, I'm not sure it's enjoyable reading, but it's very interesting reading. So compliment the staff and the director for, and the CEO for putting that information in front of us. You're welcome. Comments from the board, start with Bob. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, Thank you, I appreciate it. And um, we have uh, our newly elected soil and water conservation supervisor, oh, yeah. Rob Johnson, there with us tonight. Congratulations. Congratulations to you too, Tim, for your re-election. Re thank you. Paul? I'll just thank you all for being here. It's good to meet you. I never met a water and soil conservation <laughs> face to face. <laughs> and Johnny's good to see you back. Pat? Um, thank you for having the staff here. I like your reports, especially all the other stuff you do, too, that is in that MASA. But happy Thanksgiving to everyone. Okay. Joanne? Uh, no comment. Jeff? Yeah, um, thank you for highlighting that uh, a lot of the growth is in the southeast area, which is the Holly Region Sneeds Ferry area. Um, and, and Topsail <laughs> area, too. <laughs> uh, and uh, is her mic on? Okay, good. Uh, but uh, um, one of the things that I, uh, on our monthly meetings for the town council, uh, uh, Holly Ridge in the past has historically been known as a place to get a speeding ticket. Um, and so I like to highlight the, the ratio between building permits and COs um, versus speeding tickets. So this last month, there were seven speeding tickets issued in Holly Ridge and 24 residential CEOs. And that's actually pretty normal, about a three to one ratio of residential CEOs per speeding tickets each month in Holly Ridge. So trying to uh, change that perception a little bit. Um, and also one of the big projects is the Camp Davis Industrial Park Phase 2. Um, and we're looking to have all the infrastructure completely in place by January 1st. It's a couple couple month delay due to some building materials. And so we're expecting people to start have their shovels ready to begin towards the beginning of next year. Um, the contracts um, for a majority of the sites have already been signed. And so, um, you know, that's right on the edge of Onwasa's capability in, in, in our area. Um, but it's still very important for us to have that good water and sewer pressure and availability. So uh, thank you the board for making that a priority and keeping it a priority. So I'm sure the Board of Education appreciate the efforts of your police department. Yes. <laughs> hey, Mr. Moore, if you could figure out a way to work in a traffic circle in the North Topsail Beach project down there, Jenny oh, would appreciate that <laughs> on her end of the bridge. We're good. We're good. <laughs> we'll put the booster yeah, right in the middle of it. Yeah. In the middle of the traffic yeah. circle. Yeah, I love it. Nice. Nice. Yeah, I like it. No further comments. I move here a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. We are adjourned.